Three years ago, I looked at a video from someone called Jeffrey Walinsky, who was claiming that planets are nothing but old stars. Here's a quick clip if you don't remember or haven't seen it yet. And then I was thinking to my geology class, I realized that Earth had a giant iron nickel alloy core too, and then boom, it clicked. I realized that Earth was an ancient star. That is a tremendous leap. Well, Jeffrey is back, you'll be pleased to hear, and this time he's teaching NASA and Caltech how planets form. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Fall Tuesday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin, say a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you like simultaneously. Yes, I call myself a YouTuber nowadays, and that means I spend a lot of time online, up to eight hours per day sometimes. The internet knows a hell of a lot about us, which is why we should care about our online data. You can use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so no one can see it without your permission, which is perfect for things like protecting your ID. Now, ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. You can use Surfshark and its hack lock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock will scan various databases of leaked information and then notify its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to today's video, which is Jeffrey Walinsky having the balls to tell NASA and Caltech that they are wrong regarding the formation of planets. Oh, if you like this t-shirt, by the way, it's available on my website. I'll put the link in the description. Right, let's join Jeffrey as he starts his lesson. So I found a new diagram. I want to explain it out a little better to my listeners. Uh, I know I get a, a little bit more views than I used to. Uh, hopefully I can get people's money is worth out of these talks. Hi, Celeste. This diagram right here. I'll review this real quick. Basically, it says exoplanet formation. Assembly line of planets. The diagram illustrates how planets are assembled and sorted into two distinct size classes. Image credit, NASA, Kepler, Caltech by R. Hurt. Now, I can share this freely because, well, guess what? I give NASA money through my taxpayer dollars. What's up? So, Jeffrey, I believe, thinks that most of the astronomy that we know is wrong. It will be very interesting to see what his issue is with this. Anyways, assembly on our planets. The diagram illustrates how planets are assembled. First, the rocky cores of planets are formed from smaller pieces. Yes, we call those planetesimals. Um, then the gravity of the planets attracts the hydrogen and helium gas. Finally, the planets are baked by the starlight and lose some gas. At a certain mass threshold, plants retain the gas and become gaseous, many Neptunes. Below this threshold, the plants lose all their gas, becoming rocky super-Earths. Yeah. There's lots of problems with this, though. Is there, though, Jeffrey? Because after your last performance, I don't think that there is. Um, where do I start? Okay, here we go. Rocky building blocks. Let's start with the very beginning. Rocky building blocks, where... Uh, things are really, 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 really small. Cobblestone-sized objects, pebbles, gas and dust. And I have here, how do you make rocks and minerals? Heat and pressure. All geology students know this. I learned this when I was going to University of Maryland when I took geology. It takes heat and pressure to form rocks and minerals. Yes, it does. But what has that got to do with anything? That's how diamonds are formed. That's how all rocks are formed. So to say there are pre-existing rocks in outer space begs the question, what object had the heat and immense pressure to form them? Oh, what objects in space are associated with huge amounts of heat and pressure? Hmm. Now that is a tough one. How did these rocks form? What's all this over here? There's no process here? They just appeared out of nothing? How do you form them? 
No answer. Well, all star systems are formed from the dead matter of previous stars. So all of that gas and dust that's knocking around, which eventually over the course of millions of years goes on to form smaller rocks and then planetesimals is there because a star died or went supernova in that vicinity. That is why. Two, says here, the rocky building's blocks become a rocky cores. So then the next step is this stuff self assembles and becomes a rocky core. Self-assembly is not the whole story. They coalesce under the influence of gravity. Anybody that's played billiards knows this is very strange reasoning. Inertial momentum just doesn't disappear when you want it to. Please tell me he's not about to do this. It is a conserved quantity called conservation of momentum. That's why every single time you hit the cue ball against the number ones, no matter how fast you hit them, they will dissipate. Anybody that's played pool knows if you take the cue ball and you set it up, and you rack the numbered balls and you hit the cue ball against the numbered balls, the numbered balls dissipate. Everybody knows that. You see, the problem with this argument is, as far as we know, Earth is the only place in the universe where you can play billiards. And on Earth, you've sort of got something which stops the billiard balls from being attracted to each other, and that is, of course, Earth itself. Now, those rocky cores form because they are out in interstellar space, where no other object's gravitational influence can stop them from coalescing. It's because, the, because of the conservation of momentum. The momentum of that cue ball is transferred to all those balls down the, uh, down the table, which then dissipate. Yes, yes, yes. It's a bad argument. What else have you got? Three, adding gas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a little known fact of nature is that gas will always move from a higher pressure to the lower pressure. It is gas diffusion. All engineering projects, tools, machinery, etc. operate off this basic principle. What they're saying here is that gas moves from the vacuum, which is the lowest pressure possible in nature, which is outer space, to an area of higher pressure. Gas doesn't do that. Well, I would argue that it does, where in interstellar space, the difference in pressures create a force that is weaker than the gravitational force. If it did, then your tires in your car would never go flat, basketballs would always self-inflate without a pump, and your vacuum cleaner would not work. Again, you are referencing things here on Earth. You can't use them as a comparison. Notice how they have this step right here where they say, oh, well, you're just going to add gas. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting to note that if you see gas there, the astronomers go, well, I see gas there that way, therefore it was added. They don't ever consider the physical implications of it. You can't take gas and add it to an area of higher pressure when the surrounding area around that object is vacuum. You see, most of the gas in these Neptune-like planets act as a liquid. We call it metallic hydrogen. Again, you just can't compare it to gases here on Earth. Uh, number four, heat. Heat flows from the hotter object to the colder naturally. This is basic thermodynamics called the second law of thermodynamics. Heat never flows in the opposite direction of its own accord. And what that means is they have planets as giant self-induced heat pumps. They have planets as objects that can pump heat into themselves from the vacuum without mechanism. So basically, they're self-induced heat pumps which pull the vacuum material from the vacuum onto itself, or the heat from the vacuum onto itself. Mind you, the vacuum is a hell of a lot colder than the object they're trying to form. It's very, very, very weird. Well, not really, because the process of accretion will absolutely cause heat with the constant collisions. Anyway, Jeffrey has a solution for all of this. Let's hear it. But take a good look at this. How do we, how do we solve this issue? What do you guys notice is wrong? Well, it's very easy to solve it. They have it backwards. It starts from the larger objects over here, and then it goes to the right. So you have an object that starts really, really big and hot. It loses its heat. It loses its gas. Then you end up with a little core and that core smashes into other cores making little bits and pieces. Right. So I guess the obvious question is then, where did that planet come from in the first place? Ah, I know. The first video we looked at of yours, you talked about planets are nothing but old stars. Okay, okay. So where do those stars come from in the first place then? It's really that simple. Here's the diagram of the process. Once the object is really hot and bright, born, 
some from some really powerful electromagnetic event. Ah, a really powerful electromagnetic event. How very mysterious. You see, I have studied this before, and at this point, I'd be referring you to something called Gene's mass. Now, Gene's mass is the mass required for a cloud of interstellar gas and dust to start contracting under its own weight to start the process of star formation. If the mass of this cloud is greater than Gene's mass, then star formation is inevitable. An electromagnetic event implies that radiation is already present. You won't believe how many takes that took. Electromagnetic event imply that radiation is all electromagnetic event implies that radiation is also an electromagnetic event implies that radiation an electromagnetic which means that whatever that is must have been made too. You see the problem here, Jeffrey? It expands outwards, gets to its largest extent. That heat dissipates, the heat dissipates, the gas dissipates, and through the through this process in the interior it forms that rocky core. So I remember from the beginning when I said, well, how do you form these little rocks and minerals? Well, that's the end. Those are the end processes. What actually happens in the star is the interior is forming that giant rocky ball. And then the gas dissipates over time. See, the heat and pressure to form those rocks happened much, much earlier in the star's history. That would mean that the Milky Way alone will be scattered with all of this material from dead stars. We just don't see it. But what we do see though, is plenty of evidence of dead stars. Nebulae, black holes, neutron stars, everywhere. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, but whilst your theories are interesting, they just don't match observation. Well, there we go. A fascinating look at Jeffrey Walensky there and his uh, theories regarding planets. Not entirely stupid, but wrong all the same. Right, we are done and dusted for another Tin for Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, just a reminder, if you uh, like these sort of t-shirts, then have a look on the website in the description. There's a few other variants, so check those out. And of course, if you liked today's video, please do smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it really would be appreciated. Again, we're going for that half a million soon. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Remember, visit surfshark.deal slash simandan and use the code simandan for that whopping 83% off and three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. Now, I will be taking a two-week break as normal around this time of year and Friday will be the first guest creator, which you'll all be pleased to hear is the brilliant Dave McKeegan. See you then.